Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to bring it back to the basics and talk about how to write a blog post. Yes, we are going that far back and talking about the foundation of being a blogger, which is creating blog posts. And I want to share some tips with you guys on how you can write blog posts. Plus they can make them a bit more successful, maybe a bit more interesting and just some of the strategies that I use whenever I write and launch a blog post on my website. So if you are ready to get started, let's just go ahead and get into it. Now, I feel like this is pretty obvious, but I want to go over what you need to write a blog post. So the very first thing is a computer, maybe a laptop, maybe an iPad, whatever you prefer to write on. Most of my blog posts are written on my iPad. I like writing on my iPad compared to my computer, but you're going to need some kind of computer. Second, you're going to need a website. Of course, you are going to need a website. If you want to launch a blog post, you need a website. And the last thing I would recommend is to grab a pen and a piece of paper or a journal because that's what I prefer to use. And we're going to start with brainstorming. You need to decide what you're going to blog about. So if you already have a content calendar that's filled with blog post ideas, you want to open that right now and decide what you're going to blog about today. But if you do not have a content calendar set up yet, don't worry. You just need to grab your pen and paper and start jotting down some ideas of blog posts that you want to write about. But more importantly, you need to think about what your audience would want to see from you, what information and what resources and what content they would like to see on your blog. Now, if you have, abs if you have absolutely no idea what your audience is searching for, what they would like to see from you, this is where step number two comes into play. And that is to perform some research. So, there's a lot of benefits to performing research before you write your blog post. The very first one, you can do your keyword research. Then, you know what keywords you want to include in your title and within your blog post to make sure that it's performing well within your, C within your SEO strategy. But honestly, I like performing research just so I can see what other people are saying and what they are saying on the topic that I want to write about. Because guys, I mean, you already know there are so many blog posts, so many resources, so many pieces of content on the internet today. How can you get your piece of content to be found, to be shared and to really kind of make it big? You have to do something that no one else is doing. So yes, you can write a blog post about a topic that other people have written a blog post on but you want to make sure that you're just not copying them and you're not saying the exact same thing that they are saying. So maybe you'll get some good points that you want to bring up in your blog post, but more importantly, when you are doing your research, you need to figure out what other people aren't saying so you know what to include. In your blog post, that's really going to stand out and capture your audience and provide real value to them that they're not going to get anywhere else. Then, once you've got the topic narrowed down, you know your keywords that you're going to include and you kind of know what people are saying and what they aren't saying. You're going to again grab your pen and paper and you're going to outline what you are going to write in the blog post. This is so, so important to the structure of your blog post. In the success of your blog post, if you just come up with a topic idea and you start writing, it might end up being kind of all over the place. So I do this with my YouTube videos and my blog posts. I will sit down and I will outline the main bullet points that I want to cover within that piece of content. And those main bullet points are going to end up being your adding tags within your blog post, which you are going to get to in a little bit. But you want to make sure that you are outlining the main bullet points and then underneath every bullet point include little subsections or kind of the backup points that you don't want to forget when you are writing that blog post. Then it's time to start writing your blog posts. One of my favorite things to do, I like to grab my iPad, I'll go to a coffee shop and I will just sit down and write the blog post on my iPad. I do not recommend opening your website and typing it directly in there just because I like to have a second backup of that blog post in case something happens and it didn't save online. I actually have a hard copy of it on my iPad so that's personal preference to me. But grab your laptop, grab your iPad, sit down at your computer and start writing your blog post from beginning to end. Now, before I jump to my computer and I walk you through how to launch a blog post on a WordPress website, I want to talk a bit more about how you can write a successful blog post because for me, it's just not enough to tell you guys. Okay, now go out there and write your blog post because there is so much that goes into writing a blog post and being a successful writer in the online world. And the very, very first tip I have to give you guys is to forget everything that you learn in school and write like you speak. 
or what I like to say is write like you were talking to a fourth grader. If fourth grader cannot understand what you are saying in your blog post, people are going to ignore it. And I know that that is so hard to do. We are taught to write in such a structured, professional way with five sentence paragraphs, a structured, professional way with five sentence paragraphs that have an introduction and then you're back at points and a conclusion. But when you're writing a blog post, no one, no one wants to see that. No one wants to feel like they're reading a scholarly article unless that is like your niche and that's something that you do and that's what your audience is looking for. Then go ahead. But if you're writing a lifestyle blog post, no, no one wants to see big chunky paragraphs. They're not going to read it. So you need to throw all those rules just out the window. Just forget about them and write like you would speak it. And the best thing that you can do is, after you are done writing your blog post, read it out loud. If there are some sentences that seem too long or some that kind of choke you up and don't seem natural to you, break them down or change them or delete them completely. You want to make sure that it sounds natural and that it connects with your audience. So I share a lot of my own personal experiences. I include I and me and I directly call out my audience and include them in the blog posts. It really helps to make more of a connection. But along with that, I was already saying with the paragraph, you should not have anything like this. If it includes five lines of words, nope, I'm not going to read it. You need to break it down and your paragraph should either be one line or two lines and that's it. Sometimes I have blog posts where there's only one word in a paragraph. Why? Because it's easier to read and it's a bit more engaging and enjoyable for my audience. Next tip is to make sure that you have those adding tags, you have those bullet points or something where someone can easily skim your blog post. That's exactly why I recommend outlining your blog post from the very beginning, because if you have those big headers that people can skim over, then they can decide what they are going to read. Instead of just seeing a long, long blog post where nothing's really called out to them, they're probably going to scroll down to the bottom and then jump back because it's not interesting. The next tip is to include visuals within your blog post to break up your blog post and make it more interesting. Because, just like I said, no one wants to see a ton of text on a page. That's boring. We are visual creatures. We like to see things with our own eyes. So, if you are doing a tutorial or a how-to post, make sure that you include the graphics to back it up. But if you are not, if you are just reading a blog post about your life, you need to still include images in there. Whether that, that, is, in a, whether that is an ad, whether, that, that, whether that's an email, or an actual image. It's really going to make a big difference in the look and feel of your blog post. And I could throw so many tips to you guys on how to write successful blog posts, but I don't want this video to go on forever. And that is it for this YouTube video. I hope you guys liked it and, and find it helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and give a like to this video and have an awesome day.